Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's concentrate a little bit more on the composition of the planet Jupiter. What is the planet made of? And of course, most of us know it's made out of gas. But what gas and to what proportion? And there's something really interesting about that proportion. Now, of course, we have the atmosphere of the planet and then we have the interior of the planet. Now, the interior does change as you go farther down into the planet. But there's some two distinct differences between the two. The first one is that, of course, and we can look at it by mass or by volume. Typically, we look at it by mass. By mass, the atmosphere consists of 75% hydrogen and 24% helium, and about 1%, a little bit less than 1% of all the other elements that we can find, primarily methane, water vapor, and ammonia. Now, when we go into the planet, something changes. The first big difference is that the ratio between hydrogen and helium changes. A little bit more hydrogen relative to helium, although again, far less than hydrogen, of course. But what's really interesting is that either one of these proportions is very similar to the proportion we find on the sun. The sun is roughly 75% hydrogen and about 25% helium, about 1% of everything else. So very similar to the atmosphere of Jupiter. Now, if we look at it by volume, we get the same numbers. For the sun, it's about 90% hydrogen, 10% helium by volume, because every helium atom is, of course, four times as massive as a hydrogen atom. So, but typically we think of it in terms of by mass. Well, another big difference is that as you go further down into the core, into the center of the planet, things begin to change drastically. What we've been able to figure out recently, because we used to think that there was no solid core at the center of Jupiter, perhaps a solid core of compressed hydrogen and helium, so much compressed under the enormous pressure that it was compressed into a metal, and we still think that's the case just outside the core. So if we are near the surface of the planet, it is gas. As you go further into the planet, because of the enormous pressure, it's, again, it's a giant, giant planet, it turns into liquid hydrogen and, of course, liquid helium. And as you go further down, the pressure is so high that it simply gets compressed in metallic hydrogen. Part of the reason why we believe that Jupiter has such a strong, powerful magnetic field. Again, we'll get into that later. But what we now begin to realize is that there's probably a fairly sizable rocky core at the center. Now, sizable in Earth standards, not in terms of Jupiter standards. It turns out that about 5% of the total mass of Jupiter is probably the rocky core at the center, which makes the core about 14 to 18 times the size in mass compared to the Earth. Wow, think of it. 14 to 18 Earths compressed in the form of rocky material at the very center of Jupiter. We believe now that probably Jupiter started out as a rocky core planet and then started accumulating a bunch of gas on top of it, making it as big as it is. Now this is kind of new. If you go back 20 to 40 years ago, there probably weren't a lot of people thinking there was a rocky core. Now they even think that inside the rocky core there might even be a smaller metal core. They don't think it was completely devoid of metal out there. And so there might be even some metal, not a lot, at the center of the core. At first they thought that the core is maybe about five or six or seven times the mass of the Earth. And since then they've recalculated things and now they've come to the conclusion that it's probably somewhere between 14 and 18 times the mass of the Earth. How did they do that? Well, they look at the rotational speed of the planet. They try to calculate what it would look like if the planet was completely made out of hydrogen and helium. And then, of course, we would then realize there would be a bigger bulge. Now, in the case of Saturn, Saturn has a bigger bulge. It's about 10% wider than it's tall. In the case of Jupiter, it's only about 7% wider than it's tall. And Jupiter actually is bigger and rotates faster. We probably should see a bigger bulge. But because of the rocky core, that would be diminished. So models then show us that if we have a certain size rocky core in there, it kind of matches the structural shape of the planet Jupiter. And so therefore, now we're fairly confident that there's a rocky core in there. But it only makes up 5% of the total mass of the planet when you realize that it's as big as 14 to 18 times the size of the Earth. So 
it's relatively small compared to the whole rest of the planet. And so we still feel comfortable realizing that 75% of the planet is, uh, not 70, but 95% of the planet is made out of gas, hydrogen, and helium. We can be pretty confident saying it's a gas planet with a tiny little rocky core at the center. Didn't this have a probe a few years ago? Yes, well, it was more than a few years ago. I think we're going back almost 20 years now. I have to look up the date. But yes, at one point, they took a probe and they plunged it into the planet. Of course, first it had to go through the atmosphere and then it began to sink through uh, the, uh, the upper portion of the planet. I think they had contact for just under an hour, for about 53 or 57 minutes or something like that, and they took a lot of readings to try and get a feel of what the planet was made out of. So a lot of what we learned comes from that, uh, that plunge into the planet. Um, it turned out that we already had a pretty good model of what we thought was like, and when the numbers came back, they were actually slightly different from what we expected. Hmm, that's one of our dogs sleeping and dreaming. So just ignore that. Um, but, um, but then when they realized where in the atmosphere, because there's belts and zones, there's higher and lower pressure systems, um, what we can then conclude is that, yes, based upon where it went through the, uh, where it went through the uh, surface of the planet, the numbers we read pretty well match what we were expecting because we had already a lot of readings taken from orbital satellites that were able to pretty well guess well, not guess, of course, but measure what kind of uh, gases were present in the atmosphere. Hmm? Did they ever hit the liquid? <laughs> oh, no, no. The, uh, it was just, compared to the size, it was probably as far down as the thickness of the line by the time it, uh, the pressure and the temperature. I believe that the temperatures were starting to reach several hundred degrees Celsius and the pressure began to be so high that the, the probe was simply destroyed from the pressure and temperature. Now, it didn't get very deep.